Hey, it's Fort Worth Playboy. And my Playboy's Bunny. Welcome to our podcast where we discuss pickup, game, relationships, and... Sex, sex, sex. Girls and extensive travel. <laughs> it is a red flag. Yeah. It's a black flag. It's a black... Yeah, it's a that's black a good flag. point. It's a black flag. Knowing what we know in our little world, yeah, we know that girls traveling opens up a host of problems. Or girls moving. That even falls yeah, into this yeah, category. Yeah. Girls moving, girls studying abroad for six months, anything other than like a quick two day trip right. for business, you know. Um, what, I mean, a weekend in Vegas. These are all issues that guys in our world know lead to bad decisions on Be the very girls' part. Cautious. Yeah. Yeah. And what we know, I mean, you can pretty much, you can save yourself any grief if a girl's going to be gone for more than a month to go ahead and just break up. Yeah. You know, let, let's make a caveat. If it's for professional development or extended study and you guys already have a plan of coming back together. Right. Then you can approach that one. It's a tough one. It's still tough to manage. Yeah, it's it's a tough one, but it's worth what you decide it's worth. Right. But if she's simply moving to Notre Dame to go to school for four years, and you guys don't have a plan to get back together, uh, you know, and especially at that age, it's better to just kind of like let it go before you guys go separate by distance. Well, and like your example um, that you were using before we hit – Hit record. Oh, okay. So a guy reached out. What started all of this? A guy reached out to me. He's like, I have a coworker, and his girlfriend is about to go tour Asia, backpacking, basically, you know. For funsies. For fun, hostels, all of that, for six months. <laughs> he said, you know, do I say something to him? Because I know what's going to happen. Right. You know? And my... my Pat answer across the board when it comes to stuff like this, especially if it's like, if you're not talking about like, let's talk about just like if you know that somebody's girlfriend is about to travel to Europe or study abroad or, you know, go to Australia for a year and for, what that means. as a nanny. And you know what that means. <laughs> but knowing what we know, part of, part of our job is we keep it to ourselves. You know, because the messenger in this always gets shot. Yeah, because people that aren't aware, when you make them aware, they get angry. Yes. They get angry at you. Yeah. And they don't understand. Um, It's kind of like revealing something behind the lines, you know, and that's not, that they're not ready for. So you stay out of it and then you let their, the game, you know, play itself out. Right. And quite often you will see the game play out exactly. Just as, as you we would have it. told them it would have yeah, been. Yeah. One thousand percent. I mean every every time, you know, we put something up about guys, you know, their girlfriends traveling, um, just like one guy wrote to me yesterday, he said she was gone and she was gone about three months into like a one year trip. Uh huh. And he goes, the first thing she said, there's not another guy. But she was breaking up, uh-huh. you know. So out uh-huh. of the first thing out of her mouth was, "There's not another guy." I just want you to know that. Well, yeah. that means that there's not another official guy. Exactly. So there's going to be another guy. Yeah. Girls don't go on these adventures to be celibate. No. You know, it's part of the adventure. But do we interfere? No. Yeah. You know, I don't think we do because again, you tell. I don't care how close he is, unless he's a player himself, he's not going to understand why you're shitting on his relationship. And you don't even have to, you know, let's say you do get in that position. He asks your opinion and you tell him, I think it would be a bad idea. So when she does cheat on him, you can't go, I told you so. Right. You just have to go, are you shitting me? Are you You shitting me? Yeah, you got to be kidding me. We need to go out for drinks. Exactly. You know, these things happen. Let's go take a break. Um, that's the real deal. Because a lot of times, knowing what we know and then watching things play out with our friends and family and coworkers, yeah, you just can't you can't interfere, you know, because they will kill the messenger. 
Well, and I think, you know, even knowing what we know, you know, we are still going to have, we, the, the universal we, all of us listening, are still going to have, especially I think younger people, friends who, you know, are like, I want to do stuff while I still can, while I'm still single or, and by that, I mean, not married, you know, before I have kids, whatever the case may be, you know. Um, and so I think that people have more of a sense of adventure, you know, now than they did when maybe we were kids mm -hmm. or our parents. And so I do think this probably comes up a little bit more. Well, I, I saw a stat the other day, like 80%, 87%. A solo travel was women now. Yeah, exactly. You know? And back in the day, it just used to be men. Right. You know. Right. And, you know. Sure. And it was an adventure. You would. They would. No girls would get near them. No. They were like you know, climbing Everest or like hiking across the country or living in a jungle. Literally, they were smelly. Yeah. But but my point is, you know, this stuff's going to happen, and if it happens to you or someone that you do know, you know. Just know that the best case scenario is to say, I think that sounds great. I hope you have a great time. You know, I do think that we should step back from trying to, you know, be in a relationship because stuff happens. You know, mm -hmm. you grow apart whenever you're apart in time. And, you know, I want you to be able to enjoy your trip. I want to be able to enjoy the time that I have. Something along those lines because then, first of all, she'll go, oh, fuck. You know, maybe I shouldn't go on this trip because I don't really want yeah, he, him dating other he's, girls. He's willing to walk away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so maybe sometimes girls are doing this to kind of to kind of gauge where the seriousness of the relationship is. Um, or she's like, why don't you come with me? If she says that, she's you know, she, she means it. But I think that there's a lot to be said for if you are in particular find yourself in this kind of situation where somebody's doing any kind of extensive travel. And I mean, even a month is hard on relationships. I mean, make no mistake, even if there's an end date, it's hard to manage the distance whenever you're used to spending regular time together of any kind, whether it's even a couple of times a week or every day. So I think I think if this happens with you and a girl that you're with, either for business, pleasure, school, uh, whatever learning of any of any variety kind of approaches this with you, it's best for both of you if you couch it like, okay, let's I support you completely. I think that that's awesome. I think you're going to have a great time. You know, there's nothing here holding you holding you in place. So, you know, I think that's great. I think that we'll step back from our relationship. And then when you get back, you know, I'd love to kind of hear how you're doing. And when you get back, we'll kind of revisit things and see how, how things are. Yeah, perfect. You know, that way there's no... Misunderstanding. There's no misunderstanding. There's no hurt feelings, and that's on both your part because guys will drive themselves crazy thinking about where she is if she's traveling. Guys are the romantics. Girls are very practical. Yeah. You know. It's true. It's true. I mean, <laughs> I, I have to I have to laugh and tell on myself this was I don't think this was how this was necessarily malicious, but I did you know bag a husband by taking a job out of town. You know, I I had been dating him for about a year, but ca very oh, casually. Oh, yeah. You know, I was completely obsessed with him, but it wasn't going anywhere. Right. It wasn't meant to be anything, at, meaning I was fucking him on the regular. Um, and I was offered a job six hours away, and he was happy for me, and, you know, great, super, you know. Within three weeks, he was calling me going, yeah, this isn't going to work for me. There you go. And within an, uh, within a year, I was married yeah. to him. You know. That's pretty funny. Yeah. But 
it's just, you know, you have to be so cautious. And, and like for we're saying, if it's happening to a buddy of yours, number one, he's going to shoot you. He's going to hate you. He's going to shoot the messenger. So it's best to just kind of observe observe from a distance and try real hard not to have a strong opinion about it. I know that's hard to do for guys, but also once she's gone, find ways to entertain him. Find ways to pull him out into the real world a little bit more. So that way, when the shit hits the fan, he realizes there are other girls out there that are wanting to talk to him, that he's interested in. Even if you're not trying to encourage him to fuck around on his girlfriend, it goes a long way to just be out in the world and kind of see how it works. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to encourage people to fuck around. Yeah, you know that's bad form. But just getting them out keeps them. Keeps it lubricated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to going from zero. That's a good way to put it. Because we always say, I mean, like, the longer the longer you go without talking to girls, the longer your recovery will be when you have to. You know, right. I mean, it takes time to warm up and, and get back in the game. But you can, it's very, very rare. The exceptions prove the rule that long distance doesn't work. Right. Across the board. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take much to... Con- to be considered long distance. Yeah. Even couples who try to make something work that just genuinely live like the next town over and things like that. It's very tricky. It's it's a it's even it's even different. I mean, I've seen people that go from like living in the same a building yeah. to she's 15 minutes away. They can't make it work. Exactly. It's absolutely insane. But I think the most important um, revelation on this podcast was just like what Bunny said, was what do you do? Yeah. If this floats up, you wish her well, and then let her make her own decisions. Yeah. You know, because that gives you, that puts you in the driver's seat, and she kind of realizes, yeah, this guy will walk. Yeah. You know, and she said, well, let's go, that's fine too. Yeah. You know, but again, you know, you can re- rethink it if if you're available when she gets back. Exactly. You probably won't be. Yeah, you, you probably know? won't be. If you or one of your buddies run into this problem and it end, ends or ended badly, I have a breakup recovery guide. Link is in the description box. It is, I think it's like a $9 product. It is not, it is not expensive. It's a quick guide and it has a lot of great actionable tools to getting over a breakup. So I don't want I don't want breakups destroying anyone, whether they're casual girlfriends or a wife of 30 years. So I made this a quick, accessible uh, little guide. And if you haven't picked it up and need it, please do so in the links below. If you like this podcast, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends because we want you to win. Bye!